everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Feed the Beast's Ocean Block with another five minutes. That's how I did it. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we made ourselves a engineer's hammer from immersive engineering. The reason we did that is so that we could process the ore chunks into ore clusters and then take those ore clusters to a crafting table and place it in there with the iron cluster and that will get us some iron dust. We can run the iron dust through a furnace and this village, <laughs> this trader is absolutely annoying. Uh, and that's how we get ourselves some iron ingots. Uh, now, while that is a perfectly legitimate way of doing it, we also made ourselves a squeezer and by jumping on the squeezer with the cluster inside, we actually get two iron dust which basically doubles our ore so that is what we were working on last time now the reason we were doing that is because this episode we're actually gonna have to make ourselves some cast iron which is a, which is going to require you know a fair bit of iron in the first place so that's why ore doubling is always uh, an important thing to look at especially as early on as you can you know get away with it so if we go jump back into the quest book Back onto the getting started pages, you can see here is our cast iron quest, castaways. Cast iron is one of the main crafting components in the F2P jar mod and is used in quite a few other recipes in this pack as well. For now, your main way of getting it is to let irons and get simmer on top of a campfire, but you can alternately also loot it from structures in the water. Now, I am not doing a lot of looting in this particular world. That is because this is a tutorial world that's more about how to do things manually. Going out, getting stuff from the rafts is a perfectly legitimate way of getting stuff. Uh, same thing with the quests and things like that. There's a lot of rewards that are really, really cool. But from a learning point of view, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to focus on those. To make cast iron in your world, you are first going to need something like a campfire. Now, to make a campfire, it is three logs, three sticks, and a piece of charcoal. Now, I've already pre-built a couple in my world. That's because I kind of want to speed up the whole uh, cast iron making process. Now, the way we make cast iron is that we go and right click it on top of the cast camp uh, camp fires. And you can see it's actually placing it there in that world. This is going to take about a minute for it to cook all the way through, which is, you know, which is, you know, not too, too bad. That's one of the reasons I want to do, you know, basically 12 at a time rather than four at a time. There are some other ways of making it, but early on, this is really our only choice. There we go. Now, as soon as it's done, it will pop off just sort of in the world. You got to be careful you don't end up stepping on your campfire, though, because it will cause you a little bit of damage. So that is well and good. We've got our quest complete. Now, our reward for making cast iron in uh, in this in ocean block is actually two more pieces of cast iron. So if you made one... That would get you three. I mean, I, I guess I can kind of see it. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. But our next step or the reason that we want to make cast iron is so we can make ourselves a tempered glass jar. Before we make ourselves a tempered glass jar, though, there's a couple other things we want to do. First off, let's just make the regular jar. Now, it's important that you don't mix these two up because the regular jar is definitely not as versatile as the, uh, the tempered glass jar. But it is a basic storage tank. So it is very, very simple. The one thing you got to remember though is it is fragile. Fluids will not be retained when broken. All warranty is voided after the first use. So uh, to make a, a regular jar, we are first going to need some glass panes. To make glass panes, it is the six glass in our world. We're also going to need glass panes for the tempered jar. So I'm going to make, you know, basically two sets of those glass panes. If we take seven of them in a crafting table with the oak button, we can get ourselves a glass jar. Now, this is, again, the regular glass jar. We can go place it in our world, take something like water, scoop it up. We can go fill it up, which is fine. But like it says, if you go and break it and you go place it back down again, it's empty. So not the most useful of storages. That singularity tank we've you know found as a reward last time. That's probably your easiest early game uh, movable storage that you you might want to take a look into. But it is on the quest book. It is a reward. So we will go and collect a bucket, which again is kind of a not the best of rewards because we've already had to make buckets in our world. So it's pretty far along for you bucket to be reward but doesn't really matter it's not the most important thing you could actually probably ignore it unless you want to you know 
be a completionist with everything. Next up, though, we want to work on our tempered glass jar. To make a tempered glass jar, we first need some tempered glass. Now, there's two easy ways of us getting the tempered glass, one of which is to basically put it on these campfires, just like we did for the cast iron. So we'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, to convert the glass panes into tempered glass, it's going to take about 30 seconds. Alternately, what we could do is we can run some of these through a furnace. Now, the furnace will take 10 seconds and it'll do one paint a glass at a time, whereas the campfire is actually going to be doing four at a time in the th same 30 seconds. So it's a little bit of six and a half and one dozen, six half and one dozen the other there, whichever one is going to be the most useful for you. But they are both legitimate methods of getting the tempered glass. You can see we got 12 in about the same time that we got two. We would have, technically would have had about four in the same time we got about two or three from uh, the furnace here. So Overall, not a huge deal, whichever way you go. Now, the second thing that we need for the tempered glass jar is we need to make ourselves a cast iron tube. Now, to make a cast iron tube, it is two cast iron ingots and a cast iron gear. To make a cast iron gear, it is the four cast iron ingots and the one cast iron nugget. To make the cast iron nugget, it's just a single cast iron ingot in a crafting table. So we'll make that one first because we're going to need it. And then we go one, two, three, four cast iron ingots around the cast iron nugget, gets us the cast iron gear. And then one, two cast iron ingots with the cast iron gear, gets us our cast iron tube. That's perfect. That is a, another quest. Let's go and complete that. And we get some more cast iron as a reward for that. So again, not the end of the world, but still pretty good. Let's take this opportunity to take a quick nap. So now that we got the cast iron tube, what we can do is we come to a crafting table, one cast iron tube and seven tempered cast iron uh, or tempered glass plates will get us a tempered glass jar. Now the tempered glass jar is a very, very versatile tool. It is very, in a way it's kind of similar to the crucible in older packs, but there's a lot more that you can do with it, which makes it a really, really cool mod. Now, before we go on, though, let's grab the rest of our tempered uh, glass panes and we're going to go one, two. There are three different ways of using the tempered glass jar. So it kind of makes sense for me to make three so I can kind of show you off all the different ways of doing it. So if we go and hit you while we're hovering over the jar, you can see all the different recipes that you can make using this glass jar. And there's 12 pages of recipes here, so there are quite a few different things that we can do. There are three different types of heat sources to make different recipes. So there is the no temperature heat source, which you can get by placing on any block in your world, which will give you basically an efficiency of one. Though if you've got glowstone, you can get an efficiency of 1.5, crying obsidian is an efficiency of two, and then a respawn anchor is an efficiency of four. So even though you're even though it is a non-heat item, you still get some efficiencies from placing it on different blocks, which is really, really cool. Second up is the low temperature uh, blocks. By putting it over a campfire, you get a 1.25 modifier. By putting it over any fire, so I'm, I'm going to take this as like a burning piece of nether rack, you'll get a 1.25. A wall torch will get you a 0.9. So that's if you put the torch on the block side and then this above it. There's also a regular torch on the ground, which gets you the one uh, temperature rating, but over lava will get you two. Magma block will get you three. So again, multiple different ways to increase your output with these. And then last is the high temperature uh, heat sources, uh, all of which sort of you know revolve around the nether. So you've got your soul campfire, which will get you a one. A beacon will get you five. Blue magma block will get you two. And then soul fire. So that is going to be you know, a soul sand lit on fire will get you a one as well. So both of these are going to be about the same but you're going to need them to do your high temperature uh, you know, crafting with using this jar. So let's place them in the world It'll make it a little bit easier for us to see the different recipes that we can use them with. So if we want to use just the no temperature, we can go place that jar right here. If we right click on it, you can see all the different no temperature items that we can make. Probably the most uh, common ones you're going to be using is the lava and the redstone dust to make netherrack and perhaps the water and the lava uh, to make obsidian. So those are both uh, legitimate ways of doing it. 
but there are a lot of other really cool items in here. Another one that you're going to want to use is the soul sand. Liquid mob souls and red sand or regular sand will get you soul sand. That's how you get it. That's what you're going to need to do to make yourself the high temperature um, campfires and things like that. So next up is the low temperature stuff. So we're going to go place that jar above a you know regular campfire. If this was lava, we'd be getting the higher output. The campfire is better than the torch, but there's a couple of different options we've got for doing this. If we right click it open, we can see all the different items in here. Most common thing you're probably going to do out of this one is going to make yourself the lava. The second one that we're probably going to want to do is to do the liquid mob souls. Now I'm actually going to do the mob souls first. Just as a demonstration, because we're going we're gonna to need it and it is a little bit uh, faster than doing the lava. But if we go click play on that or go on that, you can see it's got a little bit of a progress bar. So five seconds left. If we keep a look out here, we'll see it pop out. There you go. And if we go pick it up. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. You got to be a little careful with the campfires. But we have now got a fluid container of liquid mob souls. Now, let's be the same thing if we do the lava. So we go click on that. Nice thing about this, it's one cobblestone to one lava. Whereas previous packs, it's four cobblestone for uh, one bucket of lava. At the end of the day, it's all going to be the same, though. One thing to keep in mind because we don't have this automated with pipes and that, it's going to pop out a fluid container like this. This is the really cool thing because we can actually go and, you know, put things in to different containers with this. Like if we had a barrel and we were trying to make, you know, obsidian or whatever, we could take the little container and, you know, put it in there. Same thing with our smell tree. But you can move liquids directly into, uh, you know, other containers like the Singularity Tank. That's something we're going to work on next time is the automation of these processes. But one of the reasons I wanted to do the liquid mob souls is we can take that liquid mob soul and I don't actually have any sand on me. All right, so I got a piece of sand. If we come back over to this no temperature glass, you can see one sand and that liquid mob souls. That's going to make ourselves some soul sand. There we go. Perfect. Now, because we want the high temperature, we could place this in our world, light it on fire, but at the same time, we could also use it to make ourselves a, a campfire. So if we took the three oak logs, three sticks, and that one soul sand, we get ourselves a soul campfire, and we go place that in our world. We take the tempered glass jar, place it above it, and we can open that up and we can see all the recipes that we can do with the high temperature. Now, for the most part, you can do similar recipes to the low temperature ones, though not all of them will translate over exactly the same. The high temperature, though, is where you're going to be able to do your blocks of items rather than your individual ones. So if we kind of scroll down here, you can see if we had nine diamond clusters, we could do a block of diamond. If we were the low temperature, it would just be a one uh, diamond cluster to one uh, diamond uh, gem, I guess, if it's, however you want to think about it. While you're not doubling anything in here, you are sort of speeding up your process if you've got enough, you know, of the clusters to make a full block of an item. But yeah, so that's going to be it. Oh, here we go. Here's our lava container. If we wanted to, we, we could take this fluid container and again, put it into pretty much anything we want. For example, actually, because I don't want to lose it, let's go singularity tank. There you go. We've now got a little bit of lava in our singularity tank. <laughs> that's right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Trader. So yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. That is the FTB Fluid Jars. Hopefully you guys found this uh, video helpful. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series as well. If you are, please think about leaving a like and a subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Jackal wolf also check out the description below there will be a link to my discord page i would love it if you guys stop by to say hi as well to be linked to my patreon page and my new youtube membership page if you're enjoying this series if you're enjoying this content you want to support stop by check it out there are a lot of great perks from both of them but that is it i'll see you guys next time good bye <laughs>